Would you join me as we speak on the fourth Sunday of Advent? It's found in your bulletin, in the front of your bulletin. Okay. Love's memory is long. As we come to the last Sunday of Advent, we recall the many times we have been here before with still so much to do and so much love left unexpressed. The Bible lessons recall a promise to King David, which the church has often understood to be fulfilled in the birth of Jesus. Love's promise is often kept in unexpected ways. God's love endures forever. In a world where even evergreens turn dry and brittle, God's love is the one reality on which we can rely. Today we prepare for the greatest expression of that love as we listen once more for the words in the words through acts as simple and common as the birth of a baby. God transforms the world and God's promises are kept. It is that expression of faithful love we anticipate and celebrate this day. It is that promise that brings light to our deepest night. One. What else can we do but name this candle love? exuberance, in my excitement, I missed one person. You want to introduce? Yes, my friend Peggy Johnson from Montreal slash Upper West Side is here. <laughs> That's a bit of a stretch, Upper West Side, Montreal. <laughs> Amen. Welcome, Peggy. God bless you.
Amen. It is Christmas season, and I bring you to the Christmas story. Because if you were to really read it, you would realize how crazy you Christians really are. You would realize how insane this story really is. And yet, we are called to believe. I take you this morning to Luke 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel sent by God to the town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph. And of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was perplexed. Her words and pondered, What sort of greeting might this be? The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forevermore. And his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I know not a man, since I am a virgin. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will call And we will call him the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. And this is my line, for nothing will be impossible for God. For 2019, that's going to be my mantra. There will be nothing impossible for God. And Mary, even though she was perplexed and couldn't possibly understand what was happening to her, said, here I am, the servant of the Lord, and let it be according to your word. The angel departed from her. She went to her cousin Elizabeth's house. She told her what had just happened. It is said that both babies leaped inside their wombs. And she says, do you not realize what has just happened to you? The Lord has spoken to you, and now the Lord dwells within you. She sings the song we call the Magnificat. Oh, magnify thy soul and all that is within me. She sings that song. And that is our prayer for this morning, because I've taken you to the prayer of hope, the prayer of peace, the prayer of joy. And this morning is the prayer of love. Let us pray. God, Father, we thank you for the boisterous winds that are down deep in our souls. We thank you for what you're about to do in this place. We thank you for the release of glory that we see and hit this sacred space. We thank you because the flower fades and the grass withers, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Speak now in your hush and holy tones so that we may walk in your divine sandals. O burning mountain, O chosen sun, O perfect moon, O fathomless well, on unattainable heights, O clearness by thy measures, O wisdom without end, O mercy without limits, crown with all thy majesty, true and humblest, we sing your praises. Amen Amen. and ashe. Amen and ashe. What an amazing story. When we think about Christmas and what this day means, how radical and how insane is it? How radical. Gabriel, an angel, comes to speak. She was no more than a teenager, a Jewish peasant girl, to give her this news. 
the Christ is coming, and that Christ would come through Mary. This is what happened on Christmas Day. We want to shout, and we should shout, for there is nothing impossible for God. Nothing impossible for God. Could you imagine born in the city of David, coming through the lineage of King David, and not only that, his name will be Jesus. His name will be Jesus. This is the gift I wish to give you on this Christmas, the revelation of who he is and why he came and why he had to come this way. Many of you have gotten wonderful gifts, the most beautiful and sacred gift. The only problem is you haven't opened it. You haven't opened it yet. I want to help you this morning open that gift that you have received to accept the miraculous gift. For in verse 31, it says, And now you will conceive within your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. Now, I know every parent cherishes that moment when they get to name their child. Do they not, Barbara? That moment when you get to name, that's the only thing as a parent you really get to do when the child is born. And yet, Gabriel says, mm, you don't get to name this baby. Because this is the first child that is born that is older than his parents. Amen. The child who will be delivered will soon deliver you. I should have Cynthia Rodriguez sing it again. Right? Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Did you know? And here he is, born, Jesus. For the Gabriel says, he will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will be given, and the throne of ancestor David will be given to him. He will reign over the house of Jacob, and forever will be the kingdom, and it will have no end. Now, I know every grandparent and parent believes that their child is special and holy and godly and all that. I give you all that. But this child is special. This child is one of a kind. This child is like no other child. She couldn't have possibly understood what this moment meant. With Jewish sensibilities, they are waiting on a Messiah, somebody to come and save them. They could never have possible that Mary, number one, that he was coming and coming through her. Do you understand how awesome but scary that must have been? Like, how is that possible? And that's what she says. I practically, I don't know any man, so how does that happen? Nothing is impossible Jesus. with God. Amen. Nothing. And she sings the prayer of love. My soul magnifies thee, and thy spirit rejoices, for you are my Savior. When she realizes what happened, when it truly hits her, it's not till she goes and sees Elizabeth, and Elizabeth says, and blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken by the Lord. And then she says, and why is it that it's happened to me that the mother of the Lord has come to me. For Elizabeth understands she's the older cousin because she was barren and without child, and God had also permitted her to have John the Baptist. She knew about miracles, and she knew what Mary had was nothing short of a miracle. That what's in her womb is holy, What's what's in her womb is divine, and what's in her womb is the Lord God of heaven. Jesus. You see the Holy Trinity, the Father sending the Gabriel angel, impregnator with the Holy Spirit, and Jesus being in the womb. You see the Holy Spirit, the Father, and Jesus working in creation again to create the Son of God inside Mary. 
This Christmas Day, what you celebrate is the infinite becoming finite, is the immortal becoming mortal, the omnipotent becoming impotent, the, be the unreal becoming real, the supernatural becoming natural, the metaphysical becoming physical, and the invulnerable became vulnerable. Do you understand that the creator of all the heaven and the earth and the star and the moon and the sun became an infant? Became an infant? For nothing will be impossible for your God. Because Elizabeth points to what Christmas is. And this ought to be this transformative moment for you when you understand what this day means. For inside of you is the gift, the gift of heaven and earth being birthed forth within you. When you grab hold of this truth, you understand the greatest gift is not under the tree, but inside you. But inside you. And I want you to unwrap it. I want you to understand what's inside that gift. Because she says to her, blessed is she who believes that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken by the Lord. Dr. Luke is telling us, and by questioning Mary, he's telling us all, if you just believe. If you just believe. If you just believe this morning, Mary, this little girl, must have blown her mind because it's beyond, 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 beyond human imagination that the whole universe was residing inside of her. Do you see how crazy you Christians are? This is not symbolic. This is not a metaphor. This is not some childhood fable. This is reality. This is what happened. She was blessed. And we talked about it last week when Jacob said, I'm not letting you go, God, until you give me my blessing. We know how important the blessing is, not from your father, not from your mother, not from anybody else, but from God. When the countenance of God's face shines upon you and you are brought into full shalom and functioning as a human being, you understand what God created you to be. And you are strengthened and you are restored. It means to be utterly transformed. Christmas is not a day. It is a way you should be living every day of your life. Do you believe that this miraculous happening happened? Do you believe this morning? Because if you do, take it into the center of your heart. Take it into your spirit. Take it into your soul. It ought to transform you. It ought to change the way you are. Because you receive the gift of Christmas. And when you say, I accept that the God of heaven took off his royal robe, put down his royal scepter, took off his royal crown, and put on flesh and blood to be with you, to be with you. The first gift, vulnerability. I know Christians don't want to hear that. But it's vulnerability. I talked about Adam and Eve, to be naked before each other and not ashamed. To know somebody deeply is a relationship. To know all their warts and their bruises and their crooked toes is to know somebody for who they really are. And that's why to make relationships work, there must be vulnerability. You, let me talk through an argument. Now, it doesn't even matter what the argument is about, but I'll tell you how it goes. This is how it goes. You're to blame. No, you're to blame. No, it's you. No, 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 it's definitely you. No, it's not me, it's you. No, and round and round the argument goes. Both people pointing fingers and saying it's your fault. No, it's your fault. And these how relationships go nowhere. They deteriorate and eventually may even dissolve because neither one will admit to weakness. Neither one will say, you know what? I was wrong and I made a mistake. You're like a Philadelphia lawyer. You defend yourself so cleverly, so clearly that you made wrong right. 
And you're so good at it. No, it's you. No, it's you. No, it's you. I know it's you. Okay, it's me. Whoa, wait a minute. What just happened? What do you mean it's you? This is a trick, right? No, I made a mistake. I was wrong. You own up to your own failures. You own up to your own shortcomings. That's when relationships get real. That's when things really happen in a relationship and you begin to know each other. Because even if somebody's 80% wrong, they're at least 20% right. They're at least 20% right. And you got to give them credit for that. Do not place the blame, but allow yourself to be vulnerable. Allow yourself to be open. This is incredibly hard for people to do because, especially New Yorkers, we are so tough, right? Don't even look at me on the subway the wrong way. Don't you even look at me because I got that cold stare that says, don't mess with me. I got barbed wire. I got pit bulls, I got a moat around my heart, and you can't get there. That's a dangerous thing. Because we have lost our ability to be vulnerable. We've lost our ability to heal and restore and have deeper and deeper relationships. I learned this early in fatherhood. You know, in fatherhood, I thought I was going to be the best dad. I was going to be perfect. I was going to say all the right things. Do all the right things. Not. Right, parents? You were like, I just want to survive. <laughs> you get to that point, I just want to survive. I want to get through this thing. But one night I came home, and Sierra was probably about five years old, and I was tired, and I had a hard week, and I was worn out. And she was fussing about something. And I snapped. I just snapped. And all of a sudden, I looked down at this little pouting face. I said, let's go get some ice cream. <laughs> so we went to the ice cream store. And I said, honey, I'm sorry. You didn't deserve that. <laughs> and that little girl turned to me and said, daddy, you're finally getting this daddy thing right. <laughs> Only when you're allowed to let your guard down, only when you're willing to say, you know what, I was dead wrong, that's when the relationship begins. That's when you get to know somebody for who they really are. Even amidst the yelling and the screaming and the twisting of the story, you want to get to the place where you know the other person. It gets personal and you want to know the person for who they are and take down the guard and take down all the things that you protected yourself with and admit, I'm wrong. Our ego sometimes gets in the way. If I would let that ego go, I would have more intimate and greater relationships. Some of you I've gotten to know and we have laughs about our idiosyncrasies. Because we know our weaknesses, we know our strengths, and we can laugh together at all of that. Because I don't have to pretend in front of you. I can be real, and that's when it gets real. That's when it gets meaningful, and that's what Christmas is all about. That is the image I wish to give you this morning. C.S. Lewis said it this way, if you want your heart to never be broken, give it to no one. If you don't want it to be vulnerable, then don't give it to anyone. Just put it in a casket, and your heart will never be broken. It will be unbreakable, impenetrable, and irredeemable. Because there's no way to have a relationship unless you allow yourself to be vulnerable. Unless you allow yourself to be and show who you really are. And that's why Christmas is a wonderful, beautiful moment when this infant, God, showed that he was breakable and vulnerable and fragile 
and became an infant, someone you could hurt. Someone you could hurt. Why would he do that? Because he loved us that much. He loved us that much to get us back that he would become vulnerable, defenseless little child. This Christmas, I wish for you to have the gift of vulnerability. Martin Luther said in his Nativity sermon, he said, are you afraid of God? He comes to us as a baby in swaddling cloth with whom you may take refuge. You cannot fear a baby because nothing is more appealing to the human heart than a little child. Than a little child, baby Jesus. There is no greater gift than the child Jesus, a babe playing on the lap of his gracious mother. The one who could have wiped us out with a flood. The one who could have destroyed us with a fire. <laughs> Came as a child, as a baby. Is that crazy? That's insanity. And if you just believe, you are blessed and highly favored and loved. You know, some of your friends won't even answer the phone when you need them. And here is God who gave up everything just to be with you, just to have a closer relationship with you, the gift of vulnerability. The next thing he gives us is the gift of comfort. The gift of comfort. If you believe in Christmas, you have resources that very little people have. You have the resource to get through your suffering. You have the ability to get through and understand and have resiliency that nobody else has. Yes. When I think of 9-11 and the, the suffering that New Yorkers were going through almost all together, and I heard some unthinkable things said by some religious folks. They said, well, this is God's judgment upon us. God's judgment. And they said some awful things that the people who died deserved it. And I thought, how could they say such things? And then there were others that said, well, God must be missing in action. He's nowhere to be found. Where is he with all this suffering? And I heard all of these things. And when I think about Christmas, and I understand what he went through to come and be with us and do for us, he's not a judgmental God. He's not a God that's missing. No, he's a God that's right here and now with us. He's not remote. He's not indifferent. He is with us. No, we can't understand why there's still suffering. We can't understand, and even why we are so evil to one another. How awful we are to one another. And why God has still allowed the suffering to go on. But here's the crazy part about Christianity. No other religion goes there, that your God was willing to come from out there and be here. No other religion. Every other religion believes there is a God, there is a deity, there is a universe creator. But he didn't come here to walk with you. That ought to give you some comfort this morning. Constellation. Dorothy Sayers, she wrote this. She's a writer, she's a poet. And she is the one that translated Dante's Inferno, Dante's Divine Comedy. She wrote this, the incarnation means whatever reason God chose for us to be limited and to suffer and be subjugated to sorrow and death, he has nonetheless had the honesty and the courage to take his own medicine. He has nothing from us that he has not exacted from himself. He himself went through the whole experience of humanity, from the reality of being born in poverty, to being homeless, to being misunderstood, to experience the worst horrors of being hung on a cross, pain, humiliation, defeat, and death. Your God understands pain. And that ought to give you some comfort this morning. I wouldn't, can't just worship a God who's been out there. I need a God who's been right here, who knows the pain. For every tear you've cried, he's cried a million more. He understands your pain and your suffering. 
that ought to give you a sense of understanding that God understands your pain. Yes, walk with me. Walk with me. The other gift I wish to pull out for you is the gift of love. You ought to know this morning that you are loved beyond heaven and earth. That no other religion could claim this. That no other religion understands that God got hungry and thirsty and walked these dusty roads and became everything he needed to be to show you that Christmas is about love. It is about love. And love, Frederick Douglass, I love this. His, he said, my prayers weren't answered for freedom until it got into my feet. Until it got into my feet, that's when my prayers were answered for freedom. And so until love gets into your hands, your feet, your mouth, your ears, your eyes, it won't happen for you. You have got to feel love, and it has got to express itself in this world. Love is a verb, right? Love is an action word. People can say, I love you all day long. My sister called me up, and she said, Friday, the guy said he loved me, and Sunday, he said, I don't need you anymore. I said, baby, that wasn't love. It's easy to say, I love you. But when it gets hard, when it gets difficult, when it gets painful, that's when love goes to work. That's when love, that's when I need you to love me. When I was riding high on the mountain and had all the money in the world, that's not when I need love. I got plenty of love. It's when I'm in the valley and I got nothing and you won't even want to be next to me. That's when I know it's really love. That's love. And that's what Christmas is about. That an infant would come in poverty, doesn't even have a home, doesn't be born in a palace or in a mansion. He's born among the cows. You ever been to a barn and knows what it smells like? How about being born in the midst of that? Your God would go through all of that. And I love in the Bible where it says, you can't love God unless you love your brother. How can you love somebody you don't see if you can't even love the people you do see? You show your love by the people you love around you. Even the ones that don't show you love, even the ones that will curse you out, that's when you show your true love. And that's when justice wins. And that's when we know love wins in the end. For love walks through the halls of the hospitals. Love stays by the bedside when the doctors have walked away. Love stays at the graveside even when the ministers are gone and all the words have been said. Love stays right there. Love is eternal. Love doesn't stop. If somebody says, I love you today and they don't love you tomorrow, they never loved you. Because love is eternal. It's forever. C.S. Lewis said this, the reason I believe in Christianity, because nobody is brilliant enough, nobody is crazy enough to have thought this up. It's actually funny, right? But for 10 years, he agonized and struggled, and he kind of said, there isn't anything else. He used to love all the authors that wrote, but those that were Christian, he's like, he's great, but he's a Christian. Until he gets to the point where he goes, this is crazy. There's nothing else. I've read everything there is to read. I've looked at everything there is to look at. And at the end of the day, I realize this is it. This is it. And this is how you must struggle. Because I talk to a lot of Christians, and they're like, I'm struggling with my faith. And I said, keep on struggling. Keep on struggling. The greatest prayer in the Bible is, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. Help me with my unbelief because it's so difficult to be a Christian and always remain in this moment. And so in our moments of doubt, when a Christian comes to me and says, I'm struggling, I said, let's struggle together. You think I have a magic wand with all the answers? No, I don't have anything. What I have is my belief. And together we can believe together and strengthen one another. That's what love does. It helps in those moments of doubts because clearly Mary should have been doubting this whole thing. 
And she did. She was like, this can't be happening. How could this be happening to me? Nothing in her life could have prepared her for this. Not one thing, and she had to get over the bias, the cultural. There are Jews today who do not write the word God. They do not even speak the word God. And to think that God would come through you, she had to come over and overcome cultural bias. To worship a human being would seem so utterly crazy that this was the deity and this is God. This is what Christmas means to us. That the Lord favored us on this day. That we would continue to struggle in our belief. But what did it for her was her humility and her bravery. Because when you ask questions, you are brave. To say, I don't know. And if you ask me a question, I might say, I don't know. Because that is bravery. To, to own up to that, you couldn't possibly know everything about God. Amen. When these preachers keep saying, God said this, and I know he wants to do that, and he thinks this way, I, I, I turn off. I turn off the TV. Because you can't possibly understand the mind of God. We try, but we couldn't possibly understand it all. To love somebody so purely, we do not understand that at all. And that is our work for this, for this season, is to understand the pure love and just surrender as Mary did. And this is how you open the present. You surrender. Here I am, Lord, the servant of the Lord. I don't understand. I can't possibly understand. But let it be according to thy word. I don't understand, Lord, but let it be. Let it be. Let this magnificent, wonderful thing that just happened allow me to enter into it. I can't possibly understand it. I can't possibly get it all. And that's why a lot of people have trouble with Christianity. They're trying to understand it in their mind. It's not understandable. Do you understand how mind-boggling this is? Then unless you take it into your heart and say, Lord, I surrender. I'm allowing myself to become vulnerable so that you can enter my heart. Amen. I'm allowing the comfort of you to enter my heart. I'm allowing the love of you, O oh Lord God, to enter my heart. I'm not going to control my ways anymore. I'm just going to surrender to you. I know that's scary, especially for you New Yorkers. I want to be in control. I got to be in control. But to let yourself go and say, I'm going to be in a relationship. Those of you who are trying so hard to be in a relationship but don't want to let your guard down, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. I'm sorry. It ain't going to happen. Yes, you got to let your guard Are you going to hurt? Probably. Is somebody going to let you down? Yes. Are they going to meet your every demand and every expectation? No. And yet I say, let your guard down anyway. Let it down anyway, because that's the only way you can feel the love and the deepness of a wonderful relationship. That's the only way. I know. I wish there was another way. I tried. I tried hard. It didn't work. But the beauty that I have with my daughter is she knows that I'm real. I'm not a perfect dad. I never will be. But I'll allow myself to show when I make a mistake, I'm sorry, darling. Amen. I'm sorry, I'm human. Real. And that's real. That's what bonds people together. That's what keeps people together. And so my prayer for you this morning is that you allow God to be born again this season. The freshness of love. That we must all be Mary's, Deacon Benny. that we have to birth this Christ within us and through us. That's the only way he gets into this world. It's through your hands and feet and mouth and words. Amen. Through all the things you do, may it be that everyone in the presence of you know they've been loved. That they're in the presence of love every time they meet you because you're glowing with the blessings of God and the continents be upon your face.
This is love for the world. This is love for the world. And this is love for the world. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. Why my heart is filled to praise. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. It's why I lays you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Amen. How can we return the love that has been given to us? God paid it all just so you, he could get close to you. So my question to you this morning is, what will you do to get close to him? What will you do when you know that he's done everything he could do in order to get close to you? What will you do? You can't be happy with your prayer life. Really? How much time? I used to get up at 4 o'clock, and that was our time together. All of a sudden now, he decides that 3.15 is the time I should be getting up. And it's like somebody knocking on the door saying, it's time to get up. We got time. We need to be together. I hope your fellowship this season and through the rest of your life will be like that. The doors of the church are open. If you want to find a church that's crazy and insane, and just loves God, then you are in it. Amen? Amen. Hymn of Discipleship. It says in the Bible, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, it shall pour over. I wish for you this morning to feel the ever presence of God in your life. So much so that it's just pouring out into the rest of this world. I don't know how you give back to a God who's given you everything. But I'm going to try. I'm going to try. God bless you and you're giving. May the ushers come forward.
all who are able, please stand. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, O creature here below. Praise Him above the heavenly Father God, we lift these gifts to you. No other help we know. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. The blessing of love, the blessing of hope, the blessing of peace, and the blessing of joy. May we be mightily happy and joy in your arms and in your bosom. Amen. Amen. Those who wish to come forward, Today would have been my mother's birthday, and I am a mother's child and a mother's boy, everything you want to call it. I remember she came to church one time, and she said to me, come, come on, yes, come on, amen. But we had just seen Mama I Want to Sing, and she came to church, and she was sitting here, and uh, she came to me afterward, and she said, boy, who told you you could sing? Mm. <laughs> mama did. Mama knows. I said, it's all your fault, mama. <laughs> Thank you, mama. Amen. Father God, we come to you this morning, yes, graciously Lord. understanding all that you did Thank you, Lord. and all that you had to go through in order to get us back. Thank you, Jesus. That you created us in love. And you were not going to let us go without showing us how much you loved us and bring us back into the fold. We thank you, dear God, for everyone here is walking with you in their own garden. May they hear your voice. May they know the grace and the peace in your midst. For your mercies are new every morning and your grace is boundless. We thank you, Lord God, that you did this even when we were scoundrels, even when we were doing the wrong thing. You would wait for us until we return home. And so, Lord, our relationship with you is to be deeper and deeper and to grow. For the Bible says deep places speak to deep places. I wish for that deep place in your soul to speak to the deep, universal God that we honor and praise this morning. We thank you for Mary, who was allowed to be a vessel on this planet so that she may know the greatness and the goodness you brought forth and to hold you and to feed you and to allow yourself to be so vulnerable. Allow us, Lord God, to put our egos aside, to let all those things go, to let those things that have been holding our heart hostage, to free them and to let it be gone. Jesus said, that which I set free is free indeed. I ask you to set it free, to let it go. If you're carrying a heavy heart, leave it here at the altar and allow God to knead and to work it and to make it soft again so that you may be all that he has created you you to be. Amen. Amen. I wish for you to lift up your own petitions to this great, loving, mystical God. Thank you, Jesus. We know, Lord, you hear our prayers. You hear the cries of your people, that you are with us and you walk with us 
and you talk with us and you call us your very own you are the rose you are the Sharon and we thank you Lord God we celebrate this Christmas the birth of you in every one in every heart and in every soul Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes. Great job. Amen. Amen. God bless us all. Thank you. Pastor Pierce, this, me this Christmas message for me is um, very special. Some things I was thinking about during the night and as I woke up and you just kind of hit it on the head. And um, when I took God's message through the Christmas story is that nothing is impossible with God. Mm. And remember, only criteria is that you believe and so I believe and we believe and we thank you so much uh, to our music ministry thank you for your musical excellence yes. to our ushers thank you for keeping the doors to our congregation remember now is the time to go and to do service we will have our coffee hour and we'll sing Christmas carols during our coffee hour. And uh, in deference to the Christmas season, after the benediction, please remain seated. Our postlude will come from our own Michelangelo Gallosa. Amen. All who are able to please stand for our recessional hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Number 
I'm going to tell you, it was beautiful to see, and he was playing on beat, on time. Amen. 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 Our beautiful little child. Amen. Unto us a son is given. Unto us a child is born. It is a beautiful season and time of love. I wish for you to embrace all that there is, to get away from all the hustle and bustle and everything else, and just grab hold of your loved one. May the grace of God and the sweetest communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in every household of faith now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Grace Church said, Amen. 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 Wow. Woo! <laughs> oh, it's the Savior is So excited for each and every one of you because you have been transformed. Monday morning looks very different for each and every one of you because I know you will wake up and say, Nothing is impossible. That's right. 
with God. That's right. God bless you and have a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>